on the signs, the S-I-G-N, of our trig ratios in each quadrant. So if y'all will remember, it is App State Teachers College, meaning all are positive in the first quadrant. In the second quadrant, sine and its reciprocal, cosecant, are positive. In the third quadrant, T, teachers, tangent, and its reciprocal, cotangent, are positive. Everything else is negative. And in the fourth quadrant, cosine and its reciprocal, secant, are positive in the fourth quadrant. Everything else is negative. So, what we're going to use this for is, um, if I give you an angle, I say pi over 3, find the value of sine, cosine, and tangent of pi over 3. Okay, obviously this one's in the first quadrant, so it's not all that exciting. This is coming straight off your table, but just a little reminder. The sine of pi over 3, and this is exactly how we write it, is equal to, what is it? The square root of 3 over 2. The sine of pi over 3 is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. The cosine of pi over 3 is equal to 1 half. And the tangent of pi over 3 is the square root of 3. Now, we're, pi over 3 is in the first quadrant, so all those are positive. Okay, we don't have to worry about any of those having a negative value. Okay, so let's get to where we actually have to use this. Now, if I ask you what's the sine, cosine, and tangent of 135 degrees without a calculator, okay, that's interesting. I'm going to use reference angles. Okay, this is reference angles are coming back into play. So first of all, tell me what quadrant 135 degrees is in. Second quadrant. Okay, it is in the second quadrant. It has a reference angle of what? 45 degrees. Okay, hint, hint, it's either going to be 30, 45, or 60. Okay, we're only pretty much from this point forward, Unless we're doing applications, we are only going to deal with those. Okay? So, it has a reference angle of 45 degrees. So that means that I can use, I'm still going to write it as the sine of 135, but it has the same value as the sine of 45 degrees, meaning it is the square root of 2 over 2, and we're in the second quadrant, sine's positive, so I leave it. Cosine of 135 degrees has the same value, square root 2 over 2, as the cosine of 45 degrees, but in the second quadrant, cosine is negative. So it's negative square root 2 over 2. The tangent of 135 degrees is the sine over the cosine. Well, if you put something over itself, it is 1, uh, but... In the second quadrant, tangent is negative, so that is equal to negative 1. Um, no, because then your, your signs wouldn't be correct. Um, so, yeah, just write it as the sine of 135, cosine of 135. Okay? Um, and you can confirm this in your calculator. Okay, you can confirm this in your calculator, but the whole purpose of this exercise is so that we can do these without um, our calculator. Okay, let's look at another degree example. Okay, 210. 210 degrees is in the third quadrant with a reference angle of what? 30 degrees. We are 30 degrees past 180. Okay. So that means the sine of 210 degrees, and you don't necessarily have to put parentheses. I have been using parentheses, and you can drop them either way. Okay, there's no difference there. 
Okay, it is equivalent to the sine of 30 degrees, so that means it's one half, but in the third quadrant, sine is negative, so that's negative one half. Cosine of 210 is equivalent to the cosine of 30, which is the square root of 3 over 2, but in the third quadrant, cosine is also negative, so it's negative square root 3 over 2. And the tangent of 210 degrees is equivalent to the tangent of 30, which is the square root of 3 over 3. But in the third quadrant, tangent is positive. I don't know why I said but, because nothing's changing. Um, still positive square root 3 over 3. Okay? So we're using the table, reference angles, and... App State Teachers College. Okay, now, this is the case where I think it's actually easier when the angle is in radians because, guess what? The reference angle of 11 pi over 6 is pi over 6. Okay? You can just use the denominator of these to determine what its reference angle is. I promise it works out the same way every time. Okay? So pi over 6, it really doesn't matter where 11 pi over 6 is, but we kind of do need to know because we need to know what quadrant we're in. Okay, um, 11 over 6 is just shy of 2, right? Because 12 over 6 would be 2. So that means we're in the fourth quadrant. Okay, 11 pi over 6. Um, but you don't have to go through the process of calculating the reference angle. It's, just, it's the denominator, okay? So the reference angle is pi over 6. So the sine of 11 pi over 6 is equal to, um, it's negative because sine is negative in the fourth quadrant, and it is uh, 1 half. It's 1 half, negative 1 half. The cosine of 11 pi over 6 is positive square root 3 over 2 because cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant. And tangent is uh, the negative square root 3 over 3. Notice the values are exactly the same as the values from the previous example, example C, because they both have a reference angle of 30. Or pi over 6, which is 1 in degrees, 1 in radians, 1 in the third quadrant, 1 in the fourth quadrant. Yes? Uh, because 11 over 6 is just short of 12 over 6, which would be 2, because 2 pi is all the way around. Okay? Uh, let's do a negative one. Okay, let's do a negative one. Negative pi over 4. I know y'all don't really like the negative angles, but they are a reality. Okay, negative pi over 4 Guess what? It's in the fourth quadrant. Okay, negative pi over 4 is just right here. So its reference angle is positive pi over 4. Okay. So the sine of negative pi over 4 is negative square root 2 over 2. Cosine of negative pi over 4 is positive square root 2 over 2. And tangent of negative pi over 4 is negative 1. Now, I'm able to do this so quickly because... Um, the convenient thing about pi over 4 or 45 degrees is that sine and cosine have the same value. Just one may be positive, one may be negative. Uh, so the tangent is either positive or negative 1. Uh, now that should make sense because we just did vectors and we talked about southwest being halfway between south and west, which means you've got the whole 45 degree angle thing going on. You're right in the middle, so your x and your y have the same value. You're halfway in between that um, quadrant, so x and y have the same value. So that, that's the easy one to remember. And if you'll notice, uh, one half and square root of three over two, they're always paired together. If sine is one half, 
cosine of the square root root of 2. If sine of the square root root of 2, then cosine is 1 half. Okay? It's, it, all of this is just one big pattern. Okay? And um, what I see as a pattern is not necessarily what you see as a pattern. So really, I encourage you guys, um, after we do what we're doing uh, today, to sit down and figure out your own pattern. Okay? Because that's what's going to make it stick um, better for you. All right. We have 10 minutes left in class. So let's finish this example. Okay? Um, negative 240 degrees. Okay, negative 240 degrees. What quadrant are we in? Second. second. Very good. Y'all are getting much better at that. Okay, negative 240 is in the second quadrant. What's it's referencing? 60. Very good. Okay, 60. So the sine of negative 240. is square root 3 over 2. The cosine of negative 240 is negative 1 half. And the tangent of negative 240 would be the negative square root of 3.